generation is more responsible every every time. I think every time we should be just getting more responsible. It's only going to benefit us. So like I look at the next generation and I teach a lot of the next generation and it's nice. It's, they feel like they have like self-control over the internet, you know? They're not like always on it or feeling like they have to. They know what it is. They know its uses. Let's carry on. There's more interesting things to be done. Sometimes, They're probably you know? less enamored by it than us. And than us, just because we, like they're growing up. We're just it. like, oh, new thing, and they're just like, oh my god. Yeah, I'm still amazed with an it's iPhone. Old like, news. get over it. Touch screen. Yes, I know. Yeah, Hello, I've been using that my whole life. Yeah, they literally don't know anything before <laughs> touch screen. <laughs> It's yeah. wild. We were this. We didn't have phones growing up. We just, I didn't have internet. You know, I, I didn't have internet, internet either. I think I was twelve <laughs> when we got our first computer in the house. And now these kids are like three years old using iPads. Like my n- nephews, like he'd yeah. use an iPad, know how to get on the internet, find his games and stuff. It's like yeah. I struggle with that <laughs> sometimes. I can't remember all my fucking passwords, man. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> People ask me tech questions. I'm like, ah, oh, that's on the next one, stage. I'm still not there. <laughs> yeah, you need to watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm all right. I'm like, I mean, I work at Best Buy. I see that stuff all the time, so I have an idea of what's going on. But still, when I actually dive into those certain things, apparently it's amazing. Like new Bluetooth coming out and Bluetooth 5.0, and this apparently it sends more data to your speakers, just better quality. Like you're losing better than a wire. So like yeah. Bluetooth hasn't been up to the wire quality. So now all your Bluetooth shits. Just a matter of time, man. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, that's crazy better, shit. Better, better. Virtual reality is huge now. That's fucked, man. The fucking one of my coworkers brought one of those goggles. Got like a twenty five dollar <laughs> one. Yeah, <laughs> just, just like the cardboard one. He, no, it's, it's like real plastic. Oh, okay, fucking okay. Thing There's and, a cardboard one. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like good work. Yeah. Anyway, it's weird. So we we're passing around the truck, to, like driving to work, and. Just it was just this, <laughs> he like puts on. He's like, yeah, he's just like going on his date with this girl, and I'll start teasing him. Like, oh, you got this fucking like <laughs> ritual reality girl. So like, yeah, just like get up to the bars, man, or do something. Like, but then he put it on. He's just like in this casino, and there's just this girl standing there, and Peter puts it on. And he's just like, oh, hey, Pepper. <laughs> it's like, it's, <laughs> it was super funny. Did you react to what you're saying? No, no. Oh, it was super. Thing. It wasn't super intense. This one, he he paid like twenty five bucks for it. But, like, one of them was super strange. I was just walking, like, through this, uh, through this, like, jungle garden kind of place, and there was, like, a shack and a house and some shit, and I was walking around, and then all of a sudden, there's like, just a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex standing off in the corner of this property, and I was like, oh, shit, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and, um, but I, w- I couldn't control where the thing was walking, it was just, like, moving, but I could, like, look around anywhere mm-hmm. I wanted, yeah. and, um... But I don't know if it's because the truck was moving, or if it's like if like if I walked, would it like simulate me walking? Wait, but normally with the PlayStation One, you got the two wands, so you could control your body with like the joystick, but your arms yeah. are also this. So you could grab things by holding the button as you grab and stuff like fucking that. Nutty. Walk and just move around. How long until you're just like in an experience? Well, like, this you is just it. plug into an experience well, and it's I indiscernible sh- from real life. I've seen this thing recently where you put this shirt on, and the shirt has like all these pads that can expand as if you're getting close to a wall it would push up against you Whoa. so you're starting to feel these things now in them as well and as well i seen this um the porn industry oh which i have nothing to do with <laughs> <laughs> there's virtual reality is huge there because these girls are just getting these like Dude, private it's gonna things go with these guys there, like... i watched this interview with this guy and he's just like yeah i left my wife blah 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 this is a good in between thing i just like pay for this time with this girl i get to have dates with her or whatever he just lays in bed and there's people filming him laying in bed with this virtual reality and they also get to know the girl and they go film the girl as well she's like yeah i do this for money all the time like all day just need a camera that's it and you have to have a camera that can accept virtual reality or whatever try to make it more 3d or whatever and it's intense dude like this guy this is how he gets his his kicks he's virtual <laughs> reality he's like basically like uh, you i know, feel like the sedentary shot, lifestyle he's yeah he says it feels real uh, i feel like the sedentary lifestyle has yet to hit anywhere near its peak man oh, you're eventually wow. just gonna be like laying in bed with tubes hooked up to you watching virtual I know, reality man, shit, matrix like, avatar that's oh man it's just it just fucking... looks like the matrix more and more it, well i heard this quote oh Oh my goodness, this quote was wild. It was just like, either we're going to get to that point of virtual reality that it's it's better than real life, yeah, or we already have. Well, that's exactly my point. <laughs> and we're make, already yeah. hooked up to the system. We're going to well, get there. It already day. is like that. We're immersed <laughs> in some sort of physical experience. Those are the two options. 
But I'm gonna get there, or are we already there? Yeah. So like, who cares? That's okay. <laughs> no, your body language. Dude, so just funny. like no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep it. <laughs> Man, it's intense. Oh, Fuck. Well, Alan Watts makes that fucking yeah uh, line. It's like a little more fucking not quite as refined or concrete because yeah. he was speaking in the past but he's like you're eventually just gonna have some kind of sort of machine and you just press it and it's gonna be like your fucking wildest fantasy or whatever, you know? <laughs> I know and, yeah. and so then he's just like you know eventually that you're gonna do that for a while he, he would also make the analogy of uh if every night you could dream a full lifetime of whatever you want, mm-hmm. you know, and you, every single night you go to bed, 70 years it happened to you and, and just, you've laid everything out perfect and you would just like have these crazy fantasies and you would play that game for a while but then like eventually you'd start getting a little bored. Like, Black Mirror does yeah, that. Yeah. So you'd be like, oh, fucking, I want to go with some adventures. Like maybe yeah. they get a little more like action adventure you know, you start slaying dragons and stuff and rescuing people and, and then like it, his point eventually escalates to like either this machine that you press to have experiences or the dreaming thing eventually you would just like experience this because like you would have experienced everything <laughs> so eventually you just like um in the dream analogy he says you would start playing with how much control of the dream you have and eventually you would have it so that you would just completely forget that you were dreaming yeah. that would be like the most intense fucking immersion that'd be the most intense adventure it would be to completely fucking forget it right and then do it and then he says the same thing with the button, like, you would just have a button that said surprise, and you'd mm-hmm. press it and do this. Yeah. You know? Yep. I, you know why I believe that it can happen? is because uh, anything we think, anything you think, you can do it. That seems to be the case. <laughs> it seems to be. <laughs> and uh, manifesting things, which is weird. They say manifesting that, but I think that's just making make stuff happen that you want to like people happen. scientists brains like fucking humans collective brains manifested things like cell phones you know yeah. like it literally came from our fucking head yeah. in a certain way like Manifest and I think it's crazy uh, how like that's just a testament to how powerful a human being is like the, our power to create and like manipulate and engage in the world like I, I really that's why it's a shame when you see so much bad though you know? I mean well this I keep hearing this line like recurring in my head I'm not sure where I heard it from like I feel like it was some sort of aboriginal lineage of some sort but they just would say uh um you know it's, it's tell some story of some kind of us of human beings basically being like the shepherds of the earth that like we are endowed with this crazy ability and so we have to like take care of things here that would be like the highest like moral fucking aim I guess but like we're not necessarily going to take that because we also have evil within us and so you know our capacity mm-hmm. to destroy everything but you know mm-hmm. all the more reason to take care of things but uh part of that is like maintaining humans fucking sheer and utter power for destruction yeah yeah it's sickening <laughs> <laughs> it is sickening it i mean there's sickening. countless countless instances um cure for cancer i'm sure uh, we've all been teased with that you know what I mean? Like, oh, there's these care for cancers, but they can't afford to make them where these big pharmaceutical companies won't pick it up. I mean, I feel like a lot of it, too, is, like, how many cases of shit like that... I mean, I don't know, maybe uh, you know. More, know more about this than I would, perhaps, but, like, uh, like sheer, like, you know, stop eating sugar and carbs and work out a little more and stuff and, like, stop drinking so much and lay off the sauce a bit and everything and, you know, get enough sleep. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I just... I don't, I don't know how much, like... Of our illness, it's just a result of our bad behavior. Like some what? cancers are, and some cancers are genetic. It's just kind of like a switch that goes off. Yeah. You talk about yeah. Like breast cancer being part of some, uh, like your lineage, like whether or not your mother, or your aunt has had breast cancer, but <laughs> but some of them, uh, like lung cancer or liver failure, of cancer, pancreas drinking cancer um those are brought on by those kind of things good to know yeah it makes a lot of sense Miranda Parker Miranda Parker in the house I mean it makes sense that it would be a both some sort of both uh speaking of disease like one of the other things brought to my attention by Jordan Peterson is like you know he just kind of mentions how we're living in this crazy like era of you know antibiotics and relatively like mm-hmm. no crazy famines or, or like uh, 
plagues or anything are happening. Like, no one's just, we're, we're not just dropping like flies because of some kind of illness. It's like mostly because of antibiotics. But they're eventually, the diseases will eventually like evolve to the point where they, there's no antibiotics will work anymore. And it's like this arms race behind creating antibiotics and yeah, the disease is evolving yeah. and that they tend to evolve more in hospitals because it's just like a concentration of all of them together. And then eventually there'll be some kind of like, antibiotic immune tuberculosis or some shit that's just like pfft, wipes everybody out <laughs> like <Yeah>. ah. <laughs> gotta get in those cold lakes you gotta stay healthy <laughs> yeah if you want to you know if you if you don't mind I do think that it's yeah, like fair enough. <laughs> I feel like there's so many ways of natural population control you know what I mean I know the population's growing and growing artificial population control would be the medications <laughs> you know the natural ones are the diseases that are killing everyone <laughs> Also, I think, uh, like, a lot of the population issue, isn't it, like, I could be wrong, but isn't it something, like, a huge factor must be at least, like, just the lack of contraceptives in third world countries. Yeah. People just don't have a choice. Yeah. They're just having babies like crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know enough about that. You don't even have any clinic you can't, I'm pretty sure. Like, you can't get birth control unless you're... No family planning in Canada? Like Nova Scotia Health Card doesn't cover birth control. Oh, really? Yeah, so you have to just fucking front that yourself. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like, I mean, you, anyone can afford a condom, you know, in the state that we live in, you know. I mean, the life, I mean, even if you're on welfare, you can probably buy a condom. <laughs> or they give them away here. I mean, we're so, yeah. we got so many luxuries here. I remember in high school and stuff, they'd just be giving condoms away. You're bound to just find one somewhere. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Funny not really that, we're not that hard up for contraceptives, I think we can get that anywhere, but I don't think it's nearly well, as think accessible it's, there. People exactly. Well, fucking, I keep fucking dropping the Peterson hard this time around, but I keep, I've been watching so much of I know, shit. it's hard when you're a consumed... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just going through the Peterson phase, yeah. but uh, it's so much, he touches on so many interesting things, but... He, he just drops casually in one of his personality uh, lectures, the 2017 personality uh, course in Toronto. Uh, he uh, just says something about the pop. He's like going on about a list of all the reasons to be nihilistic or something. And right. one of those, like, and the population is going through the roof or whatever. And then he just says, but like it's going to hit like 9 billion in a couple of years and just start dropping fast. And then he just goes on to something else. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, wait yeah. a second here. Like, you just fucking skint over that, like, crazy fucking... Well, it's almost like but it's I, an equation, so... right? It's like the equation is meant to stop working at a certain point, and then mm. then what happens? Well, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about, like, why that could be. Well, I feel like it's probably s- similar to, like, um, how the banks are doomed to fail, you know? It's the way that our oh, system yeah. is generated. It's the equation that we pump the money into and how we make it, and it's probably the same with people. It's so like the way that we're doing it, the amount of things that we're, the amount of food that we're making with the amount, versus the amount of people, weighing mm-hmm. all these factors, the amount of money there is to go around, resources, we can hit this number and then the equation doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's going to be uh, less resources, obviously, or more diseases or whatever by that point when you get that many people together, congested. It's almost like it's just so big, it can't do anything but fall apart eventually. It just yeah. crumbles under its own weight, like. I mean, with the land that we live in, oh, we have so many luxuries, it seems hard to imagine. Like, you drive across Canada and you're just like, vast spaces of beautiful land, and you're just like, population problem. Like, I can drive for hours and not see anybody. Yeah, But yeah. if you lived in a big city in China or something like that, you well, would probably be like, I have to drive hours until... You don't see anything. Yeah, until I'm, I can breathe. <laughs> like, it's even like that in Toronto. Well, not not the breathing issue. Yeah. That's definitely huge there. But yeah. in Toronto, you're driving for like an hour and a half or two hours, just like going through the industrial area. Yeah, and yeah. like you're just in the Suburbia, city. Suburbia, just like it's yeah, all of Ontario. Sprawling <laughs> out so fucking far. I can only imagine. And this is something I've been thinking about too is I think, I think the power is shifting over to like Japan, China area. Like they just seem like they're building the craziest things the technology is insane they're just populations going through the roof it makes me wonder what they say to them because it's almost as if they're taking advantage of the employees you know we wonder these documentaries that we watch Mm. these workers that are making two cents an hour or whatever and they feel lucky to have the jobs they're just like yes if I didn't have this job I wouldn't be able to bring anything home to my family whatever and it's just like it's because they exploit their workers seems yeah. to be that they can build these amazing things make these massive things for absolutely cheap you wonder like how can I get this here for whatever price you know yeah. and they can always do it cheaper just exploit the people a little bit more man I wonder if like it's it's 
the right move to impose some sort of regulation on being able to do like if you you should keep like your own manufacturing on your own soil or something like well yeah 